Hi guys, happy Thursday. It's almost Friday. So welcome. Um, it's been a long time coming, um, but I'm finally in my studio. It is not finished completely. So I'm hoping by next Thursday, um, I'll be able to give you guys a tour. But for now, we're stuck with one accent wall. So, my name is Rita Panula, and I am design director for Impress Art. If this is your first time watching, welcome. Um, I'm still working remotely from home on certain days, so I'm coming to you from my home studio um, that I recently moved homes. So, welcome. So, ornaments. We are talking ornaments today. And not just metal ornaments, we're talking about clear ornaments. You know, 2020 has been a year. Um, but with that being said, I'm pretty sure there are some pretty amazing things that happened for you guys in 2020. Um, whether it was a birth of a grandchild, a birth of a child, a job promotion, a new home, something to celebrate, loss of your children's teeth, maybe that small staycation that you always wanted to take um, and finally got around to looking in your area, your neck of the woods. I know we spent a lot of time social distancing here in New York. Um, when I'm not in Pennsylvania at the Poconos, I thoroughly enjoy the east end of Long Island. Um, I kind of cheat because I'm very close to the east end, but there are so many places in your own backyard that you guys can explore, even with all these travel bans that's going on. So when I was thinking about Christmas ornaments, it led me to memory balls. How great are these guys? So I know when I was a child, I always got in trouble at least once a season for knocking off my mother's glass balls that she purchased from Harrow's. So if anyone's from New York and you know Harrow's, you know um, what I'm talking about, um, or her Christopher Radko ornaments. So I was constantly in trouble because anything shiny, I need to touch. Um, hence my love for metal all these years later. So these guys are plastic, non-breakable. So memory balls, guys. But I'm gonna show you today how you could dap your metal to embellish this ball using your GS Hypo, your crystals, all different, all different things that you could do with this. And you could pull these out. So I went to a lot of beaches, we went to Montauk, we collected shells, all by social distancing. Guys, you could fill your balls, your ornaments, your clear plastic ornaments with these. So, I got these, Maureen, at Michael's, okay? And just to give a little bit of heads up tonight is the Michael's class. It's a beginning, um, bringing it back to basics, metal stamping. Okay, so you can, Jen will definitely, um, and Allie for today, when would be the last time I'm probably gonna say Allie six million times. Um, you could sign up for your beginner metal stamping course. All right, so definitely. So no, well, yeah, it's different. It's different than doing something flat, okay? You can embellish any ball, even one that's a glass coat, you know, a glass ball that's green or red or has a design on it, all right? It might get a little hairy if it's got some glitter on it. You might have to um, use your GS Hypo and let it sit for a little bit longer, but definitely you could fill these Mary with Florida sand. All right, now for my makers, or even people who like to give crafts, so the other day I purchased something, and it wasn't, you know, wasn't a fantastic purchase. I like to consider myself a black belt shopper. I shop often, I'm on a first name basis with UPS, FedEx, DHL, and the Amazon, Amazon truck. How adorable is this? So it's bubble wrap, guys and it's hearts. So when you're packaging your hand stamped items that you're making by hand and you're putting all that love into it, 
go the extra mile a little bit. This is, I definitely checked, this is available on Amazon. Um, I believe Staples has a smaller pattern of it, but you know, definitely you put so much work into your pieces, so carry that through in your packaging. So if it's a Christmas ball and you're going to wrap it, wrap it, tie some string around it. You could also stamp another tag to put on top of your package. So packaging, super important for my makers because that's what gets your, and believe it or not, that's what your customers come back for too. So we are gonna work with a lot of the stamps that we just released, the ultra detail stamps, and those are for sale on our holiday marketplace. These ultra detail stamps, guys, are made in house, okay? So if you plan on purchasing um, your supplies and some design stamps, keep in mind that these stamps are made to order. So there is going to be a lead time on these on these stamps. It's cute bubble wrap, right? See, I'm gonna recycle that bubble wrap. I know, I, we have a lot of people in the office who are either pregnant or getting married. So I'm definitely going to stamp something and recycle that bubble wrap. Good morning, Jennifer. Good morning. So again, Michael's class is tonight, six o'clock. You can sign up for that class still. There's still openings or you can sign up. If you can't catch it tonight, you can watch it on a replay of it. Um, I always take, when I take my classes, I always take them again because you never know what you missed the first time. I'm so busy, I'm a note taker. So I'm so busy writing and writing and writing that sometimes I miss really important tips and tricks. So I always like to go back and watch that online class over again to really fully understand it. So Linda's expecting a delivery from us today. A full set of Willow, have fun. That's a good one. So again, today the stamps that we're using are ultra detail. If you are placing an order, going back to what I was saying before, let's say you're ordering all of your blanks for the season or you're shopping for just to make your samples first, make sure to place your order for your metals and then place your order for your ultra detail stamps because I don't want your supplies to be held up because um, again, it does take, they're made to order, so it does take um, a couple of days before they're sent out. Good afternoon, Tammy. All right, so without further ado, I'm gonna bring you over to my bench. That's halfway finished, so. And we will, hi Stephanie, and we will start looking at two of these ornaments that I made. And if you have any questions, shout them out. Jen is there, if I miss a question, Jen's there and Allie's there today to help you guys with that also. And um, let's have some fun, shall we? I'm gonna take you guys. Flip you around. All right. There we go. That lighting's much better. Ooh, shopping spree. Carly, shopping spree for, spree for blanks. I like that. Let me get some extra light in here for us. So it's easier for you guys to see. And let's get started. So, here is the first ball, okay? So like I said, the cap does come off. You could fill it with any of your memories. You could put little tiny lights inside of it, okay? Thank you, Tracy. <laughs> I'm getting there. So I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Uh, moving is, um, it's definitely a thing. I don't know who I was kidding when I said that I would get everything back in order in a week. It's taken more like a month. So guys, this blank right here was just cut down from a one and a half inch circle. All right. That's all. And I'll show you how to do that today. 
The font here is Heartbreaker, upper and lower case. I did stamp the cap too. All right. And I used all of those ultra detail stamps, those Christmas stamps, even threw in um, some, of course, my dots, my dots. All right. And now with the cap, I did the same thing. Okay. All I did was stamp a piece of metal. And guys, I use my ring bending plier. All right. So definitely, oop, as you guys, let's see, there we go. So, like I said, you could take this right off, pop whatever you like in there. All right, and here's one of them. And with the GS Hypo, even from the back, it does not look chunky. It dries clear, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, I can only speak for the plastic ornaments. I don't know how um, glass ornaments would take with the GS Hypo. I would suggest trying it out first. All right, welcome Ken. So you could pretty much put anything on here. Uh, memories of 20, <laughs> memories of 2020, um, the Peta family vac vacation, staycation. You know, play with these, these are so fantastic. And I know, you know, the world kind of stopped, but communions and baptisms, and although they were, very few people and you couldn't have your family around you still have mementos from those events graduations you could put your ta your daughter's tassel in there so there's so many things that you could do with these clear ornaments okay so the other one that i did all right and i didn't do the cap on this one Actually, there was a cap on this one. I'm not sure. I think in transit, I might have lost it. But I did use the heart blank. All right. With my crystal setter. And then, <laughs> memories of 2020 would be a little ball of fun. You're right, Stephanie. Or you can put toilet paper or paper towel in there because that seems to be what I've been trying to find. You know, if I could fit a kayak and a bicycle, I would too, because those seem to be the things that we were out of in 2020. All right. You could, yes, Terry, you could color the inside so you don't notice the GS Hypo. Yep. Yeah. But like I said here, you don't really, you don't notice the GS Hypo in there at all because it dries clear. It doesn't bubble or anything. So then I took our washers, our large size, okay? So they're an inch and a half, and I stamped them, and then I dap them. Now guys, you could pretty much dap any of our Impress Art blanks, okay? And definitely attach them onto your plastic ball, all right? So we're gonna make one today. I'm gonna show you how I did my oval. Now, if you notice that I, I'm very, I like organic shapes. Okay. Um, you, I could have used just the round, but I kind of just wanted it a little bit different. All right. So I'll show you how I cut that out. Um, it is not even, it's not like evenly oval. It's not perfect. It's super organic. All right. So what I use on my oval piece is my one and three quarter round. What I use on my cap up top is my Alchemy rectangles. These are 16 gauge, two inch by inch and maybe an inch and a half, an inch and a quarter maybe. All right. So now what I did with this one, guys, it's important that I tell you that you really shouldn't go around. First off, don't glue it, 
okay? So once you put everything in your ball, then you're gonna glue your cap on, okay? But for now, just make sure that, you know, you only go around half of your cap. So it's easy for you to take it off and put it back on again, all right? So we're gonna start. I'm gonna put this aside for now. I'm gonna bring my block over. And I'm gonna show you, you could draw on your blank if you like. Um, I'm just going to literally do it freehand. That's how I did the ornament that I just showed you. So you could take your wire cutters, um, your scissors, your she metal shears um, from Impress Art. These are what I have handy now because I didn't unpack my shears yet, but these are also from Impress Art. So if anyone has the old shears with the white handles, those are good also. Um, and Jen will put a link for the metal shears in the comments. But what I did is I just went around my blank, okay? and I gave it more of an organic shape. Just like that. I didn't want it so cut and dry at the ends. I didn't want a finished look. All right. So I gave myself an organic oval. Then I take the coarse side of my block and I knock down my ends. Okay. Now this took me quite a while to do it. Um, I mean, if you're making them to sell, you might want to just go and purchase the oval blank. Like I said, with this one, I had more of an, um, an organic feel in mind. So it took me, I want to say a good, let's say 15, 10 to 15 minutes to really knock down the sides to how I wanted it. Um, Tammy, you really should, when it comes to working with metal, this is alchemy, it's a tin-based alloy, so it is soft. I would recommend using some kind of a metal shear because you will ruin your scissor. So I go all around it. Now I could have you know, I could keep going, but I don't want to hold you guys up all day. So then I'm just going to take my, and you see how my buffing block is super dirty, okay? And I still use it. It still works. And I'm just going to shine up my edges. All right. And then I'm gonna start. So I'm gonna place that down. And what I like to do, guys, and I wanna just show you this because now that I'm unpacking stuff, I'm able to show you when, for the holidays, how I start. So I always label and put together all of my stamps. I'm gonna take you out of my tripod for a second, all right? So these, I always keep my ultra detail holiday all together. And then I add in for easy access, okay? The other stamps that I use along with my ultra details. So that would be my curve stamp, my 2.5 crystal setter. And of course, you all know my dot stamp, okay? And then I always have a small metal ruler handy. This is nice and small. It's thin, not bulky, but this is the number one. Um, I, couldn't, I couldn't do anything without it, okay? 
So I always keep that handy. Will the circle fit on the ornament? Yes, Brenda, the circle will fit on the ornament. All right, and I could I could dap one. When we get to dapping, just um, let me know that you wanna see how the circle fits. All right, so I tried to remain organized because you know, you're stamping so many gifts, you're stamping orders before you know it, you're stamping for every, all your friends, if this is not what you're doing full time or as a part time, you know, when somebody walks in and sees what you do or you post a picture on Facebook and you start getting these orders, it's super important for you to be a little bit organized. All right, so I'm gonna pull out, let me take a look at my sample. I'm gonna pull out my, I was gonna say egg corn, my pine cone. Okay. Um, and I don't like things so even. Like I said, my, my blank is organic. It's just, it's my aesthetic. Okay. And I don't like things so straightforward on a blank. I always like things off um, a little bit. No, this is Alchemy, Jackie. You can't, you can't cut stainless. The only way to cut stainless is to use a um, some kind of laser cutter. All right, this is Alchemy. So I'm going to take my stamp. And now if you missed the live that I showed you on Tuesday, all the design stamps, this is our pine cone. So I'm going to take this down. I want to pull this up just a little bit. There is always next year, Linda. <laughs> I think I've bombarded everybody with enough ultra detail this season. <laughs> so I'm gonna take this down, give it one nice hit, bring it back, side forward, side back. And here is my pine cone. Apparently my window's open and my name, new neighbor's dog does not like me banging very much. So we're just going to have to make him a dog tag. Really cute one. All right. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start to build my pattern around it. Now, I'm sorry for the lighting guys here today. I still didn't get my lights up. There is not a gingerbread house stamp. Um, there is a gingerbread man. Okay. So I'm going to start building my pattern. I'm going to come in from underneath with my holly. And I'm going to start building my pattern. you're going to see that I'm not utilizing the entire impression on that shank. Okay. Now I'm going to come in. Let's see with my holly, my mistletoe and berries. Just like that. And now guys, what I do, I know um, we just got a question. Hi, Birdies Bangles. Um, why I have lines on my stamps, okay? So the reason why I put lines on my shanks is these are indicator marks for me when I'm building a pattern where my stem is and where my widest part of my leaf is. So let's say I want my stem to go right here. I know that my stem is, that's where my, my stem mark is. 
and this is where my petal begins, my leaf, okay? So I am going to put that right here. So I know that I'm in the right area, okay? Now guys, you don't have to overlap these. You don't have to worry that they're not touching, okay? You could always come back in with that period stamp. You could always come in with some texture. So what I'm gonna show you right here is we have a small holly stamp, okay? It's the berry branch. Oh God, sorry, Allison. Berry branch. And again, I've marked my stamp where my stem is. And I'm just gonna come right in and make an extension of my holly branch. Okay, and I could do the same over here. Now, guys, these look really nice. Also, when you overlap them, okay? Look how pretty that looks overlapped. So don't worry so much about overlapping and, you know, having one impression in the other. When it comes to building patterns like this, it looks really nice, okay? Now, I'm going to utilize that space down there, and I'm going to use some of my um, minis, mini ornaments, okay? Do we see that mini ornament? And that's how I'm gonna start building my pattern. Then I'm gonna come in, let's see, what else? I'm gonna come in. <laughs> Tammy says we need to come out with the credit card. <laughs> Tammy, I want all the things too. I um, I'm, I want everything. That's probably what took me so long to unpack everything because I could not believe. Now remember guys, we're at a Long Island. I live in Long Island. So I've been buying from the company way before I started working for them. So, all right. So again, I've marked my stamp where my stem is. And I'm gonna come in right here. And now I've got it, it's working with the curve. Now, organic, do you see how my blank is starting to take a different shape? That's what I like the most about stamping on the outskirts. If you don't, okay, and you don't like that organic look, guys, just take the coarse side of your block and knock it down. So let's say you didn't like a bump like that. Just take it, knock your side down. And that will bring that right back. All right. So I'm gonna continue, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually put some, we have a little tiny baby pine cone. Okay. I know Noelle, I know you and I are very fond of the rustic look. All right, so I have my baby pine cone here. Now, as you can see, this baby pine cone is an ornament, but you could also turn it into, if you flip it upside down, you could turn it into an embellishment. How adorable is that? Right? And this is what you could use to fill some of that negative space. All right, so I am going to remember to put my stamps away, but before I do that, I'm gonna come in with the sprig, all right? 
And I am just going to very slightly bring that into the frame. Okay. I feel like it just gives it a little something. All right. Again, I'm going to take my core side, knock my ends down. Now, remember, guys, this is Alchemy, so it is a softer metal. So when we are dapping this, we're kind of going to smooth out those edges anyway. All right. So I'm going to come back in. And just use some of my dots. And I love that I'm seeing the dots in a lot of your work. <laughs> I feel like someone's listening to me, even though my my um, 11 year old going on 35 doesn't. So thank you guys if you are growing fond of the dots. And then you could also add that crystal setter. You know, definitely add some sparkle. You don't have to really overdo it. I'm not a big fan. Of a lot of too much bling. I love bling, but Sometimes, you know what? I have to really show you my Christmas trees in order for you to appreciate it. <laughs> All right. So I have my crystals. So my next step is going to be putting my font. So I used Heartbreaker, Signature Heartbreaker. Let me pull this back. See, Stephanie, I, I noticed that you use a lot. Of, see, I see me and Jen, we watch everybody. Okay, so this is the signature heartbreaker. I have to say, you know, I'm very, I'm very all over the place when it comes to fonts, but lately I'm really gravitating more towards heartbreaker. All right. Even though they tell me they need, oh, we need typewriter. And I, you know, I'm, I have my own mind. I go where the stamps take me. This is three millimeter. Carly, if my, ha the rest of my house is done, I will give you a Christmas tree tour. All right. So this is lowercase heartbreaker. It is a three millimeter. And you, the great thing about this is that you can connect or choose not to connect your font. So I'm gonna pull these away. All right. I'm gonna grab a sticker guide. And I am going to place my sticker guide. Actually, let's see. So if I'm doing, you know, and sometimes, guys, when you're stamping a lot, you'll kind of know, you can envision how long your word is going to be in that certain font. Um, at one point, I was using Melody for everything, and I actually started to write the melody font so you know the more you use your tools the more you use your stamps i'm telling you it's gonna happen so i am just gonna eyeball it so i want to do memories of and then i'm going to use my 2020 stamp all right Gonna come in 
with my uppercase that where is my M? Hmm. That's a W. See, this is what happens when you don't put your stamps back in the right places. I am not great with that. Um, Charlotte, Stephanie, is a connecting font with certain letters. Okay. So I'm going to start with my M. My E. So Terry is there so hi Ruth okay so Terry is there a rule of thumb when you are stamping more than one line of text in terms of spacing in between two lines so too close or too far apart okay so I'm gonna show you what you could do Terry so you're gonna use two sticker guides all right I'm gonna pull this away for a second, all right? And then we'll put that back on. When you are doing multiple lines, utilize your sticker guides. So I'm gonna go right under my M. Okay, guys, everybody see that? I'm gonna go right under with, a hash, with, with one of the hash marks. It doesn't matter which one, okay? But I'm gonna use the center, all right? These are the bracelet, the bracelet sticker guides. And I'm gonna run it down my disc. All right, just like that. I am connecting Heartbreaker, Carly. Okay. Let me move this up so it's smack in the middle of that disc. All right. So now that I am on the orange line, when I'm finished my memories, I'm gonna take my sticker and move it to my next orange line. Okay? Lynn, I wouldn't measure it out. This is the best thing you could do. All right. So I'm gonna bring this right back up. Yep, you could do that too, Mary. You could definitely do that too. I'm just going to grab my phone charger, guys, because I don't know why my phone seems to want to um, expire right now, battery-wise. So let's plug that in really quick. Let me do that for you guys so I don't lose you. All right. Now we're ready. Okay. All right. Yeah, it, it is. It definitely is much easier to do it that way. So let's continue. Alicia. My memories. So now I'm going to come down. I'm going to pull this sticker guide off. 
just gonna flip this down a little bit more so you could see, okay? And I'm gonna use my orange line. And do you see how I am lining up? I'll tilt this up so you could see. Do we see that? So now that was my orange. Now you could choose to do it on the black or in between. It's really up to you. But I am gonna go right on my orange and run that sticker across. Use my O and my F. I'll pull that away. And I'm gonna come back in with my 2020 stamp, okay? Yep, turn the tips and tricks. Turn these guides vertical. And there is my memories of 2020. All right. I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna Buff that just a little bit, okay? Now with your Sharpie marker, if you've marked it and you can't get it off, definitely mark it again and then wipe it and it comes right off, okay? Remember, you can use alcohol. If you don't have alcohol available, you could wipe it right off just by, okay? Just by wetting it a little bit. Same thing with the enamel marker. So I'm gonna come in. I'm gonna take my enamel marker and I'm gonna go over it. Now you could definitely use your patina, your um, bluish green, your gold, your brown. Today, my lighting's kind of bad in here, so I'm gonna use my black enamel. So for my beginners, okay, um, Definitely, definitely get your hands on the enamel marker. Um, you know, this is a water-based enamel marker. It's formulated to sit inside of your impressions, guys. Okay, it's not gonna come out. It sits deep in that impression. This is not a paper towel. All right. So you could use a regular household paper towel. And you are going to blot it. Okay, just stab that and lightly wipe. Now, if your enamel is not sitting in your impressions, it's one of two reasons. You are wiping too soon, wiping too hard, okay? Or your impressions are not deep enough. How beautiful is that, guys? Okay, Mary, your, your impressions might not be, like I just troubleshot it, um, your impressions might not be deep enough, okay? If the font that's wiping out is Celtic, remember that when you have more negative space, you're gonna need for that enamel to dry a little bit longer. Hi, Jules. All right, so you wanna make sure that your impressions are nice and deep, because this enamel sits inside of your impressions. Okay? 
So my next step is I'm going to come in with my dapping block, okay? I'll pull you guys up just a little bit. It's the Austin font, right. So there is a lot of space. There's negative space in that font. It needs to be deep, your impression, and it also needs to, you know, let it dry a little bit longer, okay? Um, so then your impression's not deep enough. Okay. So you're going to place this face down. Take your punch. Place your, your punch. You're going to place it right in the center. Take your hammer. And you are going to go around your blank. and dap it, okay? Look how pretty, guys. Look how nice that looks. And now your edges are nice, okay? Let me grab an extra ball so you guys could see. So Ruth, I used a round blank, an inch and a quarter, okay? Um, I just bought, you can, Shelby, you can, you can use aluminum. Yes, Terry, it does. Um, Ruth, an inch and a quarter round that I cut into an oval to have that organic shape. All right. So then you're going to take your ball. And you're just gonna place it right on top. Does everybody see that? How fantastic does that look? Okay. Um, you, Mary, you definitely don't need a two pound hammer with, um, with Austin, okay? So, Noelle, this is, you know what, that's a good question. I didn't even think of telling you guys that. Let's pull this back. So, I want to say with the cap on it, it's a three-inch ball. The basic hammer is fine, Mary. You don't. You definitely don't need a two-pound hammer. You don't need a two-pound hammer with Austin. All right. You might want to try um, rocking your stamp back and forth, and I'll show you in a couple of minutes. All right. So it's a three-inch ball. So before you glue that on, you're going to want to put your crystals in. All right. I had to jump the gun because I just had to show you how pretty that looks. So I'm going to take my block again. I'm going to use my GS Hypo. And I'm going to pull out some of my crystals. Okay. Take my tweezer. Let's move you down a little bit. Um, yes, E6000 will definitely work. Now, remember how I tell you guys how important it is to wipe off your glue before you put your applicator back in? So I don't listen to anything I tell you guys, apparently. You know, it's that, that, old, uh, that old saying, right? So definitely want to clean off your tip. Um, you're going to see that it's going to create your glue bubble already without even pinching it. So you're going to take your glue on your applicator and insert it into your divots.
Um, no, Ruth, you're going to get them at, you could get them at any of your craft stores. Do as I say, not as I do. Yes. Yes, Jennifer. <laughs> All right, so I'm ready for my crystals. And I'm gonna just pick them up and put them right into my divots. Now you could use any color you want. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use pastels today. <laughs> I'm going to get what I can. I'm just going to grab what I can. And then it just leaves some really pretty pops of color. Yes, you could definitely use E6000. Definitely use your E6000. All right. So then I would take it. Okay, and I would put some dots of glue on the outskirts, okay? One in the center, just like that. Then I would take my ball, okay? and place it on and pull it back. All right. And what you could do for this to dry is you can, oops, definitely lay it. And let's see. So we talked about laying our bracelets to dry in a bed of rice, a bowl of rice, right? Coffee beans. Should make it smell really pretty. Okay. Or you could do it in two parts. I lost a crystal. Let's put one back in there. There we go. You could do your crystals first. And then you can just take a piece of tape and attach it to each side and let it dry that way. All right. So again, all of these stamps that we use today are on our holiday market. All right, and we will not be coming out. I think we've bombarded you guys with ultra detail stamps. So we are um, done releasing designs so we have a lot of new designs, ultra detail for this holiday season. All right. So instead of holding it, I would really, I would place it in something and let it dry. Okay. Now for the cap that we talked about, I'm just going to place this aside. All right. For that cap, you're going to come back in. with your rectangle, okay? And you can measure it if you want it. We're gonna do that right now. Um, the cap on these ornaments are, I want to say, all right. So I am going to just mark my metal. And take my line and remember I like organic okay so it doesn't have to be perfect for me yes a ring a ring blank or a bracelet blank would work okay and I'm gonna cut it all 
right? So again, I'm using Alchemy. And I'm going to take my Holly. You could definitely use a ring blank. Um, no, we are not releasing any other non-detailed Christmas ornament this year. We are all done with Christmas ornaments. All right, so I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna put my dots in. You could sink crystals as well. And then I'm going to take my ring bending plier and I'm going to start from the center and I'm just going to come around. Okay. And make that cap. And I'm going to place it. grab another ball you're going to actually I'm jumping the gun here today <laughs> you're gonna come in color in your impression I like to enamel my rings and my bracelets after I use my bending plier, all right? It's really personal preference. Gonna dab it, lightly wipe. shine that up a little bit so I'm gonna take my buffing block and just give it one pass over just to shine that up a bit then I'm gonna take it and put it right around that collar all right and there is your ornament you're gonna make sure to put your blank, glue your blank on. Hi, Gail. Yes, Gail, they will definitely be available for a short time after Christmas. All right, definitely be available. So Mary, you could purchase that at impressart.com. All right. Now, Mary, I know you had a question about Austin. So I'm just going to pull Austin out for a quick second so I can show you. Let's see. And I have it right here. I just want to pull Austin out so we can... We could troubleshoot your font. So guys, this is Austin, all right? And you could see it is very, it is wide. There's a lot of negative space in that, in that font. So I'm just gonna take the font, put it right in front of me really quick. I'm gonna pull out, um, let's see. I'm gonna pull out a word. Let's do smile. Now, Mary, when you are stamping, because there's a lot of negative space, I want you to try and tilt and tap these. So what I mean by that is you're going to obviously line up your letters. You're going to hit it once. 
Then you're gonna pull your stamp towards you, away from you, side, side, okay? And this is gonna leave a really nice and even impression in your metal. I just picked up a J, where is my I? There we go. All right, and then we will color it in together. Okay, so we have Smile here. So what you're gonna do next is Um, Angie, when I say short of a time, I, I, we haven't decided whether we might, you know, um, kind of put them in the vault and then bring them out again, but they will be up until, you know, the end of January, February, but I could be wrong. It could be that we're just going to keep them up. All right. So I am filling in. So Carly, this is Austin. Okay, Austin is a font that is an exclusive for Michaels. All right, so we're gonna let that dry and we're gonna dab it, okay? Just like that. And then we're gonna lightly wipe it. And here is your smile. So because there is so much negative space in it, guys, you definitely want to make sure that your impressions are really in there, okay? So tilting and tapping um, would really help when it comes to this font. Also, do not, you know, using a two pound hammer on this font, it's just gonna really smash it's gonna just, your, your font will be distorted because that, that two pound hammer is just a little too heavy. All right. So I hope that helped, Mary. So now I had another question and I forgot who asked it, so I apologize, um, about the circle. Before I cut, before I cut it, if the circle would fit on that ornament. So let's take a few minutes. And let's dab a circle, okay? So if you have circles and you don't want to cut your metals, you don't have to. You're going to dab your circles. You could dab your squares, flowers, little, you know, our flower, our flower blanks. If you dab them, they will look pretty, okay? And then, so this is the oval. Let's just flip this around. You could definitely use the circle. Okay. You're very welcome, Mary. All right. So you could definitely use your circles. All right. Your hearts are the same way, okay? So if you want to use your heart, like on this ornament, all right? It would basically be the same process as the last ornament that we stamped, okay? You would put it in your dapping block. You would make sure that your impressions are face down, okay? Come in the center. Pull your heart out. So Susan, this heart is one and a quarter. Oh God, I'm so bad with sizes. Jen or Allie, could you post the link for that heart? Here we go. What's really cute, guys, 
is if you wanted to do this heart with the family name. And then in the back, you could do other hearts and stamp the insides of them and then dap them. So you could see through the clear glass at the names in the other hearts. It's a cute idea, right? You're welcome, Susan. Yep, so it's one and a half. I was close. I said one and three quarters. All right. Any other questions? Any questions, guys? Any questions? So I'm gonna flip you guys around. And I will, tips on dapping a washer. Okay, let me put you back in here. So, Carly. You're gonna have to pay a little bit more attention to the inside of your washer when you're dapping it for these ornaments, okay? Could you definitely want that concave shape, okay? So you're gonna put that right in there, take your punch right in the center and hit it. And I really want you to move your blank around and if you notice that I'm hitting it at an angle, you really wanna concentrate on the inside of that washer. Sandy, you could, oh, so the, the heart is available in brass, copper, aluminum, alchemy. What I used today was the alchemy. So that font was Austin that we just used. So Sandy, you could look on our Facebook page and look under videos and they will all be listed. All right. Yes, they are tarnish free, Donna. They are a tin based alloy, very similar to pewter. Okay. Um, I use it as a sterling silver alternative because it does not it does not tarnish, it does not discolor, it does not turn you green. All right. So these are actually really alchemy is really great for Christmas ornaments as well. So let's put you back in there. Let's see. And that is it for today, guys. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, hopefully, some of you will sign up for that Michael's class this evening, so we'll get to hang out a little bit more. Again, like I said, it is a refresher beginner stamper, and I know we, stamping class, and I know we just had a question from, let me go back. I apologize, not to reset, Jessica. Um, how do you get things to look like they're in a straight line? So Jessica, if you have time tonight or maybe sometime this week, you want to sign up for that Michaels class at michaels.com. And that's definitely, I'm going to walk you through how to line up all of your fonts. Um, we're going to work with Arcadia tonight, but you don't have to um, use Arcadia. You could use any font that you have. Um, you could also sign up for the class and they'll email you a link after it is posted. So if you don't have time tonight, you could watch it at your own leisure. Well, I'm glad. Thank you, Lisa. I'm glad that you love today's project. Teresa, Jen will post the, the link below. Oh, you're welcome, Georgia. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You know, you guys got me two days a week and I'm constantly pushing myself. You know, you, you guys are kind of my inspiration because I have to come up with new things for you guys twice a week. So I'm actually kind of, well, I miss you guys three days a week because I know we used to see each other three days a week, but I was, you know, really struggling for some ideas. 
so. Oh, Gail, you definitely have to definitely send us a picture, Gail. We'd love to see it. We would love, love, love to see it. And again, I think since this is Allie's last day with us, let's send her some hearts. Um, she's been, she's one of those people that just leave an impression and she will be missed greatly. Greatly, greatly, greatly. All right. Well, I'm glad, Anne, that you're inspired to do that project. I want to see. Now, remember. Oh, Angie, you're starting substitute teaching again? All right. Okay, well, you can watch us on the replay. You can watch us on the replay. Remember, next week, the wall hanging challenge. Wall hanging challenge. Have, get your submissions in. What are the cones in the shelf behind you? Linda. Um, so are we hiring now? We're not hiring right now. Not right now. I don't think. Um, I, you know, she, uh, she was an intern, so. I'm not sure. I really don't know. I only know about stamps. So my cones, are bracelet, are bracelet holders. Okay. So that's what they are. I like random things on my shelves. I have random things on shelves all over my house. It, it's just my thing. So, all right, guys, have a fantastic weekend. If you are coming to hang out tonight with Jen and I, I can't wait to see you guys. And we will see you on Tuesday.